the participants of my program to the public through the directory. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a competitive bowler, and I want to get sponsors. And I want great benefits for businesses that want to sponsor events. And I'm using this as a way to bring their name to the public. So it isn't about me making money. It's about me making money elsewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, uh, Frankie, I'll let you talk to that. I know that's that's kind of how Frank uh, does it with his. So definitely, uh, definitely an avenue that the directory can help you out with. So, what type of events? I'm a I'm a competitive bowler. I, I ah. can offer that, but if I make it something successful with bowling, other people are going to copy and others copy me on another sport. So I'm just going to do them all. Why, why let somebody else take the other take the competition? You know. Yeah. So, do, you do, name you the sport, favor? Do, do yourself a favor. Yeah, I'm listening. Do the bowling one as well as you can, and don't worry yep. about anything else right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna partner with other people to do that. Okay. So that's my game plan. Uh, because uh, you know we we a lot of us are multi license holders, and. Uh, Always anxious to move on to the next thing before the first one is really as good as it should be. Right, right. I completely understand. But I don't understand. Like, so uh, when you say or so you're, you want to present events or the, or the individual bowlers? Uh, actually, in the variety of programs I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it all. So basically, bowlers will have the opportunity to feature themselves, um, sponsors, people can sponsor the bowlers. Uh, people can sponsor events. Um, it's all about it's all about basically bringing money to bowling. Is this in a and professional bowling. league or anything, or a recognized? It's gonna, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna cover every aspect of from the 150 average bowler who wants to compete and learn to get better uh, to the professionals to be able to keep going to compete also. So, but there's no like official uh, tie with any professional bowling association or anything. Uh, not yet. No, I haven't even approached anybody until I get it, until I get it down stand path. Yeah. I'm sure going to present that well, to anybody. Well, my question is: is as far as the professional bowling associations go, what what are they doing in that area? They have their events. They have their annual event. They need. No, I meant like promoting directory wise and you know because you're you're basically saying you want to have uh, bowling news like right or bowling uh, tips and techniques and how to improve your bowling uh, bowling events around the country or where they can get uh, go to local bowling alleys or or trainers right I mean that's all the kind of stuff you're looking to do across the board yes well I would think that it's a wide open niche I don't know of anybody that's doing that one. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look up bowl, uh, like bowling. I, yeah, I don't. I don't have any uh, in my directory on there. Yeah, look, look bowling. Bowling. yeah, let's search for bowling directory and see what happens. <laughs> now, the USBC, the American Bowling, uh, the United States Bowling Congress, they um, they have like people list their events there, and there's a bunch of directories out there with tournaments listed, but it's very limited, and it's really about. What most people do with directories, give me money, I'll put your name on the internet, and I want to do so much more than that. I, I'm thinking, give me your money, I'm going to take that money, sponsor event to bring people to your to your to, to, to your business, basically. So right. Well, this is this is listing number two. So if you can't beat this thing out uh, to be bowling, you know the bowling alley directory, um, I think you can definitely do it. Hope so. Now, where, where, where are you? Where are you from? You're from uh, uh, Indiana. I am from Western New York, just outside of Buffalo. Oh, okay. I am driving through Indiana right now. Oh, that's why. There you go. I know where you're at. I see your truck. Just kidding. So yeah, this this is uh, and this just goes straight to the bowling. So that this one's terrible. Um, but this that's the second ranking on Google, and then this one also is terrible. What the PBA does is they, they, they publicize their, their their events, and I'm pretty sure I saw a bunch of their PBA members, their, their profiles on there. Um, and, of course, they sponsor their they, – they advertise their sponsors and stuff like that. But um, Well, the, all these look like they were built in 1990. So yeah, if, really if you do. get your directory uh, rolling, you should be able to cave these guys in pretty easy. Gotcha. Although I would do some uh, research to see what kind mm -hmm. of traffic they're getting. Right, 
And these are really, well, the first one was just a list of bowling alleys. The second one did have a lot of interesting stuff in the sidebar. Yeah, it did. I mean, this was, uh, but still, it, I mean, the, the look is still uh, old school. And again, this is all just, uh, let's see, American Lanes. These are all Brunswick. Uh, Nobody cares about the law. This, this is specific to, uh, it looks like a lot of stuff here, but it looks like it's specific to Georgia. And there's just actual bowling lanes on here. So, and then car insurance quotes. Looks like they're just throwing stuff to the wind here. <laughs> So I, again, this is what maybe Frank was saying: is make sure it's fo you know focus does its job well, and you're going to be fine. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit later on the presentation here about uh, niching down your directory and what you need to uh, kind of some steps you need to go through in order to think about um, starting your directory and and uh, looking at your audience, uh, what they want, that kind of stuff. And uh, so we'll 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 bring this up uh, again a little bit later today, but. This is pretty funny. This is actually uh, I was looking up uh, bowling alleys, and ironically, uh, as I'm ex-military, um, this is one of the uh, the websites that I was looking at for my competition. If I started the uh, military directory, is basedirectory.com. Uh, but they, as you know, uh, every, uh, there's a bowling alley at every uh, base location, so that that's probably why they're showing up there. Every base has a just because hey, they're usually locked down. So, yeah, Ryan. Ryan. Yes. Uh, just so you know, we have a huge storm blowing in here. So if I disappear, it means my electricity went out. <laughs> What's up with your storms? And uh... no, it's been unbelievable. Unbelievable. We've had more anyway. storm damage, mainly from wind. Did you hear the thunder? No, it just sounded like you were moving your desk, but uh, sounds like it's right over my house. Good, uh, anyway, excited. Mike, do you, do you have any uh, do you have any questions on uh, BD? Obviously, you, are, uh, you started using it already. Uh, any questions about the setup or what it can or can't do for you? You just kind of need to get get done and, and execute. I do have one question. I read something. One of the directories I read where you can set your your radius up and all that stuff and and, and your priority one, two, and three, but you can set. If I understood it correctly, you could set your like a membership listing on uh, a level to show up at the top of all of them across the board. Is that possible, or did I just mis misinterpret it? Uh, no, you can do that. So let me let me demo uh, how to do that uh, real quick. Let me sign out here real quick. Let me let me get logged in, and uh, I will demo that for you guys. So uh, basically how it's set up is, uh, you, you mentioned radius search. Um, so how that normally works is you can do the radius search, but it, that overrides um, uh, initially, I guess, the category uh, limits. Like uh, it'll do it by distance if you're searching for that. Uh, generally, if you're just uh, searching for a business type um, or if there's a, I guess, the same distance away, it's going to give default to the, the one that has the higher um, search results uh, listing, you know, uh, I guess, emphasis from uh, how you set up the membership level. So I'm going to, uh, as soon as I log in real quick, I'll show you guys uh, on the webinar today how to uh, change that around for your particular uh, websites. And I'm going to show you a quick trick as well that I normally do uh, for that. Uh, and it'll help you uh, kind of parse them out a little bit better than uh, would normally happen. So uh, what you want to do is when you log into your particular back end, uh, for your, your item, you're going to see uh, under finance membership plans. And inside the, the finance membership plans, this has all the different plan setups you have. Now, if you just have the basic one and you haven't done anything yet, it's going to probably say silver, gold, or platinum, I think is what it says. Um, and uh, those will be the categories. But whatever category you want, um, it'll have a, a pecking order basically in the results. And you'll notice here on the uh, search pr priority, um, this is where um, the, the, where the search priority uh, shows up. So this doesn't do anything. It kind of shows you what the priority is. So uh, by default, I think it has it at a one or maybe a zero. But just realize if, if you're using one, they're actually at the search priority above one, and that, that'd be zero. And so if, if it has zero, that's going to be the top uh, search result. Uh, hey, Mike, I'm going to uh, pause you just so I don't hear your background noise there. So 
um, what that does is it uh, it gives the that's the top priority for zero, and then it goes down from one is going to be below zero, two is going to be below one, three is going to be below two, etc. So uh, ten, obviously, that's uh, that's pretty low. Um, um, and what I'm going to do is um, I'll just show you where to change that in the priority. So whatever plan you want, just go ahead and go into edit. And there's going to be a tab that's called search visibility. And when you click on that, it's going to be right here. It's going to be the first item search results priority. And so again, zero is the highest priority. It basically tells you that just to remind you. But um, if you have zero there, that's going to show up first. Um, and then obviously, if everybody has uh, that zero, um, it's going to just randomly order those or alphabetical or whatever you have set for the settings within that group. Uh, but if you have alphabetical as your order, it's going to still provide, if this is a zero and another group is a one or a two, it's still going to do alphabetical, all of these first, um, and then show up uh, alphabetical for the next category down because it still it does this based on the priority. So what I recommend, though, doing, and the only reason I uh, recommend this is so you can differenti differentiate them a little bit better is when you get the, the packing order of your uh, particular listings, um, like let's say the elite is the top and then it's VIP and then gold, whatever, get, get your stack order down. And I would always, uh, so if you have six levels, I would always make, uh, multiply it by a hundred and just to keep the math easy and then make that the priority level of your bottom tier. And then subtract 100 from each one of those. So the, the fifth worst, you know, highest would be 500, uh, 400, 300, 200. And then your top plan would be at a 100. Uh, and so if, I'm just going to show you what it would be. So for me, elite partner, I'd make that 100. And so the reason I would normally do that and I have done after this this uh, this listing, I haven't changed it on here yet, but for all the other ones I recommend doing and have done for other people, I always make that search visibility for my top level 100. And why is that? Why 100 and the next one down 200? It's, it's just for simple math, so you can kind of see the tier, but it also basically, it allows you flexibility. And what I mean by that is, if you, you may have five tiers right now, but let's say you, you add a, a one-time only pricing or you add a, an additional membership level that's slightly uh, different, or you add a lifetime membership, um, and you maybe want the lifetime membership to have a little bit less priority than the, the same level plan that's paying annual. So uh, Frank, for example, has a gold and then a gold lifetime. So let's say he wants the gold to be a little bit higher in the rankings than the gold lifetime because they're paying every month. They're not doing the one-time fee. And so maybe all those gold uh, show up right above the gold lifetime. And so by doing that, when you make a, a, a new plan or you make a special plan, or maybe you make a special rate for a particular person, you can add those membership levels in and now you have some flexibility. So let's say this was the gold, um, uh, annual and, and Frank had that gold, uh, lifetime. Uh, let's say, um, when he makes that gold lifetime, now maybe the search results are, are 110. For the because now it's a little it'll be a little bit behind the other gold and uh, in the search results and it, you will use that priority. So and then and then again you know if you have somebody you want to give somebody a special priority maybe um, you make a membership level one time only for them and 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 they're a one oh nine. So just by breaking it up into hundreds and then tens that if that makes sense for everybody it kind of allows you to have that uh, flexibility later to add other membership plans in there and slip them in. Because what happens is, is you could always redo it, but then let's say you had one through 10 because you had 10 membership levels. Well, now let's say you wanted a 5.5. That's not a thing. So you'd have to say, okay, well, this is now uh, six. And then, I'd, then you'd have to go back to the old six and make that a seven, the old seven and make that an eight, the old eight and make that a nine. You'd have to basically go in and edit every one of those and shuffle them down. And so this just makes it easy for you to kind of slip in a search result priority wherever you want just by spacing them out. And so you don't have to do 100 and 200. You could probably do 10 and 20. Um, that uh, that may be a little extreme to do 100 and 200. But again, it gives you more flexibility. And the system works perfectly fine having all those different numbers. It just kind of uh, throws it in a, you know, in a, a number stack. 
So it really doesn't matter. You could have a thousand and six thousand if you wanted to, but um, may, so maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, that maybe that works a little better. Then you can kind of slip in the 11, 12. Uh, but um, that's just my, that's where it's at. And that, that's just my suggestion for the party. So you can slip stuff in later. Does that make sense? I know you can't see it uh, uh, on there. So you can watch the replay, Mike, uh, if you weren't seeing the screen. But bottom line, it's in the finance membership plans and then the search visibility tab. Um, and so membership plans under finance is where it's at. Did that help, Mike? I know you weren't looking at the screen, but. Nope, oh, sorry. And I silenced you. So hold on. Let me get that on. I don't want you to have to go to your phone again. All right, there you go. And I apologize, Mike. I, I turned off the background. I'm not sure if you need to click something on your screen there. I authorized uh, uh, approval for your. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know you can go up to a thousand. Or I thought you had like one, two, and three, and that was it. No, so you can do whatever you want. I thank you very much. Hey, Michelle, welcome. Again, uh, as, as people are jumping on there, if you want to turn on your audio or video, feel free to do that. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. okay. Is there anything, anything we can uh, talk about or help you with today? All right, no worries if uh, I don't know if you got off the sound there. If you don't have anything, just jump in, Michelle. If you have anything, uh, Frank, anything else new with you, Jason? Uh, some other guys in the in the group there. Any other questions for today? Otherwise, I'll jump into the the topic for today. No, I got nothing. All right, let me jump in here. So. So what I'm going to go over uh, today uh, for everybody is just the directory development process. And this is something that I went through just in a, a cursory example. There's a lot of other steps in here that I did or anybody else probably uh, did. Maybe some steps in here that, that you didn't do and may want to, to either re revisit or redo, I guess, if you end up doing something with another directory. Uh, doesn't mean that this is the exact thing you need to do or the the only model that kind of uh, represents what you need to think through. But just some topics that today I want to kind of go over what I did for my local directory. And again, this is going to be focused on my local directory. Um, it, it could be the maybe a little bit different process or a little bit different topic sets or whatever if you have a, a different niche or functionality for your directory. But I think it's going to hit home for most people that are listening to this of, of things that would uh, apply to, to most every directory. So, um, and, and feel free to, to jump in as you guys uh, want. This is not, I'm not just lecturing here. If you guys have a topic set on something uh, that or input, I'll, I'll ask some questions and you guys can jump in if you have any comments set uh, as we go here through the slides. So, the, the biggest thing, what I'm going to kind of go over today is, is basically this diagram here. It's basically, you know, uh, some questions or topic sets on doing doing a, any general business model. This is almost like business 101, not necessarily directory stuff, but it's just uh, since most of the directories are here for a purpose, um, I mean, some people are doing it just for fun, uh, but I would argue that most people are doing it either as a side business or as a intention uh, to make it their full-time business so they can actually quit their, their day job. And so um, I'm going to kind of take this from the perspective that you want to run it as a business. And so um, not that, that these won't apply if you don't run a business, but obviously they're more critical questions to ask and be able to answer if you're trying to make money with your directory. So these are some of the questions that I had to answer, and it's kind of diagrammed out here in the model to the right of the screen. But these are the four main, main questions of the, the who, what, how, and why is who is my target customer? And so a lot of times uh, you, uh, that's the first question you, you need to focus on. It's at the center of the, the diagram over there to the right. It's the core question that you need to answer. And we'll go into this on another slide uh, with a bunch of different topic sets, but you need to analyze who is your target customer. And the reason this is so important and that it's at the center is because everything that you do on your directory is going to revolve around that question. Um, if, if you don't have it narrowed down on who you're talking to, 
you won't know what to type uh, onto the page to resonate with that audience. You won't know what ads to run. You won't know uh, what uh, videos or uh, content to add in there because you don't know who you're trying to focus on. So uh, we've talked about this before in another webinar of kind of getting the, your customer avatar, or like who you're focusing on. If you were a customer coming to your website, what would you want to see? And so that is the fun, uh, fundamental question you need to ask. And I, the hardest thing I think for a lot of people to realize is that uh, the business owner, you, although representative, uh, uh, hopefully, of you know, that niche, perhaps, um, what you want or like isn't necessarily the thing that a majority of customers would want. And I've had to struggle with that uh, myself, because I think, hey, if I'm if I like it, if it makes sense to me, it's going to make sense to everybody or everybody would like that. And that's not always the case. So that's maybe a mental block or it's just something to think about that you need, may need to get past for your business. Because uh, obviously, if you're running it as a business, you want to do uh, what is focused on for the, the majority of your target customers and not necessarily uh, you. Uh, the second question is, what you know, what do I offer the customer? So um, that is really the i think the initial stumbling block when people start to do directories is um they they kind of know who their target customer is they have that niche experience they kind of know the the genre the realm and the uh for we talked about bowling a, a second ago so you know i know they kind of know who the customer is but when it comes to the uh just learning the directory sphere and how those work the big question becomes is what do i offer to the customer and so that can uh, swing wildly from uh, only offering the directory and what BD offers uh, internal to its core uh, framework as a as a directory to uh, you know maybe the full extreme on the other side uh, kind of what Frank does where um, you're not really don't really care about the directory it's kind of a added bonus but you're not really selling the directory itself that's a an inroads to the uh, that. Uh, area or that, those people to then sell other stuff other than the directory. Uh, and so you need to think about that. What do you want to offer the customer? What are, when they land on your directory, what are you trying to pitch to them? And again, what is that money-making proposition that you're offering them for, in exchange for their money? And the third question is, how do I create the value proposition? And so you may know who it is and you may know exactly what you need to offer, but the question is, how are you going to sell that to them? How are they going to know uh, that you offer that? How are you going to, once they see the pricing uh, or the features, how are you going to portray or get that message across uh, on what value that holds for them and why they wanna part with their money in order to get that particular uh, item, service, or product. And so that that's an, another piece where even if you know what you're gonna sell, it's it's the hard part of the directory is it doesn't have, it's like a blank script, right? It doesn't write your content for you. And uh, Frank can attest to this one on uh, how difficult it is to make good copy, right? That's copy skate, um, you know, and, uh, uh, whatever whatever the term is for that, you know, uh, uh, that it, it doesn't copy anybody else, right? It's unique content uh, it, that's going to rank high on Google. It doesn't write itself, right? It's just blank web pages and you got to add the content, the features and tell them why they want to buy into your directory. And so that's another stumbling block that I think a lot of directory owners get stuck on. And then the fourth question is why does it generate revenue or why now that you've presented that, um, what's of what's getting people to buy? How are you uh, upselling? How are you converting that into a, the money, um, you know, machine for your business in order to keep your business alive and, and uh, you to either quit your day job or um, or get get the money that you want in order to expand, uh, advertise, et cetera, et cetera. How, how are you going to uh, convert that customer once you're trying to sell to them? And, and how do you make that process, process more efficient, uh, get a lower churn rate for your directory, and uh, get them to uh, be a long-term customer and one that is a high uh, of value for uh, customers over time. So that's those are the four questions. Who's my target customer is at the core? Uh, what are you going to offer them on your directory? How are you going to create and present that value proposition to your client? And then the last one is, is why or how are you going to generate or why does that generate revenue for you? So anybody have any general comments on, on this overview? Is that kind of hit home or any stumbling blocks or anything that you guys have had to think about? Any personal experiences on that or things that you guys have learned? Yeah, that all sounds about right. Right. 
So anything anything specifically resonate there or that you've had the most difficulty with, Frank? Or no, not really. All right. So, um, so that those are the those are the general questions you want to ask. And so the first one uh, we're going to go over is who is my target customer. And so when we think of directories, uh, they're all um, in terms of uh, the you know the horizontal or vertical directories. And and what I mean by that is horizontal is uh, a Craigslist type thing uh, that you see uh, on the screen there to the right. It basically has a little bit of everything from everywhere about anything, right? I mean, you can kind of find whatever you want on Craigslist. It's a it's a horizontal, it's a broad painted brush uh, across a bunch of different categories. And then, um, and I just kind of highlighted some example uh, things out of Craigslist there on the screen, right? That are more verticals that are within the subsumed, you know, subset of the horizontal Craigslist. So uh, Airbnb, for example, is the vertical for uh, for homes. Um, Lyft is the vertical for um, getting a, a car ride or delivery. Rover is a vertical for pet sitting. Uh, Fiverr is a vertical for um, for you know services or digital services. Etsy is for uh, home goods and selling. You, you get the you get the point. Um, and so, does Craigslist have the same overlap or market as Airbnb? A little bit, right? There's an overlap there. Um, but Airbnb doesn't do any of the other listing categories. They just focus on on the uh, you know the places to stay. Um, but Craigslist doesn't do all the stuff and have the um, the impact for that vertical of of hotel stays that Airbnb does, just because they're focused on that and do that really good. And so uh, when you're thinking about a directory, that's kind of the first decision you need to make is who's my target customer? What what am I doing? Am I am I, am I a local directory, um, or uh, or am I a, a national directory? You know what what am I? And so you kind of go through all these different things. So a vertical platform uh, has an advantage has some advantages. Obviously, their focus is only one thing, right? They can build their platform solely around, solely around that one problem their users have. And because they're focused on that, they're probably more in tune with that uh, particular uh, avenue. Uh, they can shift a little bit faster uh, because that's all they're concerned about or looking at, and they're not looking at multiple different areas. So they maybe they can scratch that itch a little bit better for that customer set, gain that market share if the market shifts and be more successful than a general horizontal platform could on that particular item because they have that focus on one particular thing. It also gives them great experience, right? It gives you a great experience because it, when it's only focused on one thing, you know it's going to do it well and, it, and it's gonna provide that better user experience. I mean, if, if, if you had, if I tossed up something to you and like, hey, uh, you wanna go find a room to stay in uh, in Milwaukee because you're traveling there, would you go to, uh, Craigslist, or are you going to go to Airbnb? And I guarantee you, 95% of the people are going to say uh, Airbnb. All right, they wouldn't go to Craigslist to go go look at that. So um, it has it usually provides that better experience because you know, um, you, and you just think, and, and rightfully so, that you're going to get more content there because everybody else goes there. It's only focused on that one thing. You're going to get the the larger inventory, the better experience, and that's usually the case. Now, the vertical platform also has some affinity advantages. They usually have those deeper synergy with their customers. We kind of talked about that a second ago, where they just know them a little bit better. That's the only sphere they're in. They're they're listening to the to the blogs, the news, the the um, the podcasts about that particular subject. Maybe they have their own podcast, their own webinar, their own discussion forum sets for that particular thing. They just know the needs of their customer a little better because they can focus. And so you know that maybe that's what you're gonna want to do for your directory. So maybe the vertical platform is is for you. And but the in reality, the horizontal platform also has its advantages. Uh, it has multi needs, right? If there's a common need for a wide range of industries. Uh, you can create that wide applicability and, and increase the demand. So um, the the more obviously areas you're in, if you can provide that customer service for, for, for a particular uh, horizontal uh, um, item, then you, you're going to have more people that you can focus on just because you're not niched down and your target audience isn't so small that you're not going to make money. Um, it's also easier to scale, right? And so if you have a product or service that's more standardized, 
uh, the complexities in operation are more minimized and you can scale easier than developing niche specific processes. So if you if you have a, a particular process for Airbnb, right, maybe the execution for that is totally different uh, than uh, car, you know, car rides. And so if you if you niche down and focus on that particular process, you probably have to reinvent the wheel every time you go to one of those uh, different verticals because they're all a little bit different. So if you make it uh, maybe not as specialized, but uh, more uh, generic, I guess, in the processes or it's easier to scale because you can kind of do that across the board. And then uh, the, hor the horizontal uh, platform also allows you to do industry specific pricing. So um, a lot of times um, you can focus on a wider uh, brush, but still be able to charge higher money for a different uh, niche that's in your. So for example, lawyers or doctors, you can still charge a little bit more for them, but it allows you to uh, maybe advertise to the pizza uh, companies local as well because they're not charging them as much, but you still get the, the larger audience. So you're making a little bit of money from them, a lot of money from another uh, uh, niche and allows you to kind of spread the wealth, get a little, uh, get, I guess, maximize uh, the curve, if you will, kind of do the uh, the old math thing from high school, right? Where you, you get the area under the curve, the closer the, the boxes are together, you approximate and get the, get better profit volumes there. So those are a couple um, different options. So uh, for me, for my local directory, I'm using horizontal, again, because I'm a, in a particular local niche and I'm not, uh, you, know, you know, focusing on one particular area. So usually, again, you know, a local local thing uh, may make sense for horizontal. If you're in more of a niche specific thing, maybe a vertical uh, is your better option. So, you know, when we're talking about this, um, and we, we were talking about that with the bowling again a little bit earlier, where you can always expand out later, but don't get yourself so spread too thin before you have your processes down, maybe uh, your manpower, if you're uh, solopreneuring it and doing it all on your own. Uh, don't don't get so spread out and thin that you don't execute anything good and then you don't actually grow. It's kind of like, um, it's the old... Uh, you add, you know, if you add your firewood right uh, out in a flat path and start to try to start your fire with the kindling on one end, it's not going to do anything. You kind of have to stack it up uh, sequentially uh, and start the fire at the bottom and then eventually will take off the whole pile. Um, so it may be better to segment focus first and then expand. So just as an example, we talked about Airbnb on the previous slide, uh, but they, they didn't start out as Airbnb. You see on the right hand side there, uh, this is their original Airbnb site. So uh, just think about your directory and what you, you think it does or does not look like. And you think, hey, I, I need it to look a lot better than it does right now. That was Airbnb to the right. Um, it almost it looks like a B, BD site, to be honest. But, um, you know, that's what it looked like. I mean, go and then go look at it uh, now uh, on, on the comparison. I guess I should have put that on here. Uh, it looks nothing like it used to. But that's how simple Airbnb uh um, started out as, and it, it wasn't even Airbnb, right? It was air bed and breakfast. It was all spelled out. And so um, they started with one room with an air mattress and a WordPress, WordPress blog that you see there. And um, there's other examples uh, that started out small that obviously got huge. Uh, Amazon, right? It was only books. I think everybody knows that. eBay was only collectibles uh, only. Uh, Facebook started out at Harvard, you know, uh, at one college and Yelp uh, started out as only advertising San Francisco restaurants and that's it. No other categories, no other towns. That was it for Yelp. So uh, I'm not saying that you guys are going to be the next Amazon, eBay, Facebook or Yelp or Airbnb. But the point is, is that um, even these large companies didn't just suddenly launch um, the, you know, the web page for all sports and all things at, at one time. They started out with bowling and then they expanded from there. Um Another example, I guess, of something that didn't go uh, go well. Uh, I'm sorry for thre for thread up. Here's an ex another example that they fir they first started out with too broad a focus, and uh, they failed. They didn't get any traction, uh, and so then they because they didn't, they narrowed it down to focus only on kids' clothes. And then once they did that, once they niched down to something that they could focus on, that they were experts in, that they knew the industry of, instead of trying to get you know greedy and grab everything and try to be the next uh, Amazon, right? They niched down to kids' clothes, and then and then once they were successful in that segment, 
Then they re-expanded their offering back to adults, which they originally tried to start with because they had the traction and then they could start expanding from there. So um, again, just a, a lot of stuff there. I'm not saying that's going to happen. Just think about that when you're growing and when you're thinking about your niche, what you want to do, figure out what that segment focus is where you can rock it and, and, and do really well. And then have an expansion plan from there uh, that you can kind of follow the trail of your plan to expand out once you have more success. So on this slide, what I basically did was I graphed those, ver uh, you know, what a typical directory could be for that vertical and horizontal niche. And so uh, when I talk about narrow focus, uh, you know, both geographically and in terms of the offered products or services, this is kind of the, the diagram that would look it would look like. If you if you had a vertical industry between a uh, city, state, and country focus, like you you're you're spreading yourself across or advertising for or, or looking for customers from the particular geographic uh, things on the vertical, um, that that's what a big vertical industry would look like. Hey, I do uh, for Uber, I do car rides, and I do it in every city, every state, and every country. I'm going to China, going everywhere, going global with my directory. That's a vertical industry with all of their particular uh, niche boxes, I guess, uh, going vertically that you would focus on. Um, and then the other way is, is kind of what I'm doing, uh, where it, it's a citywide, right? I'm focusing on my city for Hudsonville.com, and I'm doing all the blue boxes horizontally. I have every different market segment or different businesses that I'm looking at just because and, and I'm only focusing on one city. So I have the horizontal industry boxes across the bottom. And then the the green one on the, the slide here, when you guys are looking at this, is that's a specific industry, a specific niche in a particular city. So that's kind of the smaller one um, where you're focusing on a just one city. I mean, it could be Chicago. Uh, I know another guy I'm working with is doing plumbers in Chicago, right? Um, it's one industry, one smaller area, and then they want to grow from there. So just some considerations uh, for how you want to grow. Think about that in the vertical and horizontal. Where does your niche fit in? What would you want to pick as your box or two boxes or or maybe whole vertical or whole horizontal? What can you handle? What do you want to focus on? And think about how you can grow that first. So, for example, um, if I get my system down for city, you know, maybe I expand that to my state um, site that I have and I kind of move the multiple uh, rows of blue boxes. And, I, and, you know, and obviously the ultimate thing is Amazon, right, where it's every segment and every location and, and Amazon's the whole matrix of uh, vertical and, and horizontal, right, um, for the ultimate uh, trillion dollar uh, cash cow if you ever become the Amazon, uh, you know, in the future. So that so think about that for what you want to do, how you want to grow. And then, you know, ask yourself some questions like how, you know, how narrow is too narrow? Are you going to uh, niche down on your topic set so small that there aren't going to be anybody to pay? Um, they may be really interested, but there's not enough to sustain you, right? So if you're looking at uh, at uh, sweater knitters in one town, there's probably like 20, right? Are those 20 people going to, uh, how to knit sweaters going to pay you enough money to do for business? Probably not. Or maybe it's enough. Uh, for you to do your niche directory because you're just doing it for fun and you love that uh, knitting sweaters, right? And that may be enough, but think about that. How you know how narrow is going to be narrow enough, and that's where market research comes in handy. But but that's something you got to look at. And then the other question you have to ask yourself is how do I set the stage for that future growth? How do I get uh, from that one a box niche uh, down that I started with? To expand out? Am I going to go horizontal? Am I going to go vertical? Or you know maybe go a little bit um, horizontal, you know, sideways uh, or at an angle, depending on where the boxes are at. You may just uh, test out a, a different niche uh, statewide, even though you have another niche just focused on a city. So you don't have to do just vertical or horizontal for expanding, but it, it uh, you know you can pick your choices on how you want to do that. And then obviously one may take off better than the other if you have multiple directories. And then maybe you start focusing on that one instead of the original one that you started with, and and put all your efforts there. So um, we always talk about this as well. You know if if you want to have uh, test out something and it, they're not always going to work. Um, maybe it's the wrong focus, maybe the wrong niche, maybe the wrong location. It may work somewhere else or in a different niche, but not in that niche or that location. So just think about that. And so, so when you're thinking about that as well, it has long-term implications, right? Um, because if you're picking something, but looking to expand, maybe you pick a different domain name, uh, or, uh, that will allow for future potential growth. So for example, if, um, if we're talking, I'll just use the, the the plumbers example we're just talking about. If if 
you're in Chicago and you're looking for a website for plumbers uh, and you want to start out in Chicago, right? That specific industry segment in a particular city in the green box there, maybe chicagoplumbers.com is the perfect domain name. Chicagoplumbers.com. It's available. You take it and it, it's seemingly the perfect domain name. But now let's say you do well, you rock it and you want to go to the rest of Illinois. How does that domain name look now? It's chicagoplumbers.com. What if I'm not in Chicago? I'm in a different city. Now, maybe that name's not that appropriate. So think about that, where you want to go as well. Um, or maybe if you're you're never, let's say you do you know Illinois plumbers, um, maybe that's not the right one either. If you're never going to go past Chicago, maybe that's a misnomer at that point, Illinois plumbers, and, and you don't have any other plumbers other than you know in Chicago. So think about where you want to go. Think about where you can expand. And obviously it has, other than domain names, there's probably some other items as well that, that would uh, you know cause you to choose a different direction. But that's one of the things uh, that you want to think about. And the reason I'm going over these as well is a lot of these are hard to undo later, right? If you, if you pick the wrong domain name or you set it up uh, and put all your efforts or all your money into one niche when maybe the other one uh, had a better potential and you didn't kind of think about it ahead of time, you may have exhausted all your resources or picked the wrong domain. And you, you kind of went down and put all your resources in the wrong basket, if it will, before you put some thought into it. So does anybody have any uh, comments on that? Any uh, Anything that anybody actually ever changed uh, the direction that they were going for the particular niche or still trying to figure out what, you know, if they want to do horizontal, vertical, or, or what they want to do for future growth? Hey, Rich, welcome. All right, so we'll continue on with the next question is that, you know, what do I offer the customer? So the first, uh, you know, we went over the first question. You, you maybe you now know the niche, you know where you're going to go, but now um, you, you want to think about what do you want to offer. And so the big thing that comes up in all these directory uh establishments and, and spending time and money on the directory. A lot of times people think that they're going to uh, innovate, uh, you know, the world. They're going to have a directory. They're going to be the next, uh, you know, thing since sliced bread. Everybody's going to flock to their website uh, and they need to have it perfect uh, initially uh, right out of the gate. So they're going to spend a lot of time, a lot of money, and they're going to they're going to focus their entire business plan around one specific feature um, because this is the the most important thing that quote their customers want, even though they may not have actually talked to any potential future customers. So this this is a lot of the things that people struggle with or have in their mind, and they think that um, they're going to have a new idea, um, and 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 they got to put a lot of money in to have something other people have. So I want to kind of talk over initially here some innovation misconceptions uh, as you're thinking about that for your directory. So the first one is that, you know, the misconception is that new ideas, that innovation stems from ideas nobody has had before. So, um, you know, I like to put the rest there. That there's, there's very few things or a few phenomena that are actually new. Um, a lot of people have either done it before, have already done it or did it and succeeded or did it and did not succeed. But most of the best innovations are often adapted, refined or combined from stuff that's already out there. And so don't, put a lot of effort into try to come up with something new. A lot of times you can just look at what's already there and adapt, refine or combine and make something that's newer or better for your directory. That'll get people to use yours instead of the competition. So just think about that uh, as you look at competition, as you look at what's available out there, what can you adapt? What can you refine and make better? And what can you combine that's, partly good from a bunch of sources and make them together to make something really awesome. So innovations obviously are existing business patterns with slight variations of something that has existed elsewhere in other industries or other geographical areas. So think about that when you're looking at that. It's not something new. It's just something that's uh, just kind of uh, adapted, refined, or combined. The number two misconception is uh, big budget that, uh, you know, if you have a big uh, budget or you need a big budget, or, or you need to pay for a lot of customizations in order to be a success. And, and really, um, that's that's the, the biggest uh, misnomer I think we can have with these directories, um, that there's a lot of them that look exact like the baseline BD directory. They don't have any customizations, uh, but they have efficient processes, they have good marketing, and they're making a lot of money because their processes are good. 
And then there's other people that put a lot of money. Uh, we just had one on the forums today where somebody's like, I've been you know, developing it for uh, 12 months and I'm going to throw in the towel. I just don't think it's ever going to get there. Um, but they, you know, they're, they're putting a lot of money into, into plugins or customizations and, and making it look different. And they haven't actually tried to make a sale or they haven't actually turned their direct around to see if people are willing to pay for that uh, particular niche. So um, it always comes down in my mind to execution. It's not about the big budget. Uh, it's about, um, you know, doing your niche uh, a, a favor by one launching and two just providing that service uh, and and you'll get enough traction to to get some money coming in but uh, it doesn't need money to actually happen and then the third mi uh, misconception is that you need new technology right um, the the innovation breakthrough uh, uh, are always based on uh, fascinating technologies and and that's just not the case I mean th there's there's not really anything that uh, one person has on their directory that's so earth shattering that people are using that directory because of that particular feature set. Um, uh, that very few and far between is that the case. It may in your mind's eye be the, the coolest thing because you wanted to have it and you paid to have it and it works good, but um, people probably don't even care about it. And I'll just be blatantly honest with that. There's a lot of times we put way too much effort in that, that newfangled technology or plugin that we have for our website and people could, could, uh, could care less most of the time. And, and it's unfortunate uh, for you uh, and, you know, for your effort that you're putting into it. But again, a lot of times um, the core functionality that BD puts in there when executed properly um, is going to be just as good as something that uh, you're paying for. So just think about that. And again, there may be something that your audience uh, is asking for, right? Uh, but please uh, make sure that you guys verify that or you have a majority of your paying, paying customers uh, asking for that or, or something that um, they want that you can add. But again, I would always, and, and BD always uh, harps on this as well, do that after you have money coming in, when you have profits coming in and you have some people that are asking for particular features, that's when you start, um, you know, enhancing that stuff. And that's, it's kind of the snowball effect, right? You get the money coming in, they ask for stuff, you give them new stuff, you get more customers, uh, but uh, try to avoid digging yourself too much of a hole early on, because uh, to be honest, a lot of those new technology or innovations or plugins or whatever is not going to make the sale. Um, some of the things that you, you know, um, I'll, I'll talk about this on another slide for the adapter, find and combine, but uh, just some questions to ask yourself is, uh, you know, what's the competition doing? Um, and uh, is there anything in BD that allows me to replicate that or do what they're doing successfully? And so if it does, there's obviously BD is very flexible. Uh, most of the time when you see something that other people are doing, BD can probably allow you to do that and execute that same function. Uh, and then if it doesn't, um, it, you know, or, or you don't have uh, knowledge of that setup or you, you see something that is close to what you want to provide, but, you know, you can adapt it, refine it or combine it in, into your offering. Uh, think about what those things are. And then maybe if that's going to be the difference, maybe you need to pay a a developer or a uh, some customizations to adapt or refine something other people are doing because it kind of it it fills that little gap. Then that's that's usually the thing that where you want to pay for those customizations. So let me just talk about um, you know my thought process again. This is going to be different for your particular directories, but the, my thought process of as I did research for my local directory, what I had to look at. So obviously you're not going to make a, a, a directory that's exactly Yelp or Nextdoor or TripAdvisor, but it's always good to look at those mainstream sites, the the big hitters in your particular niche. I, I'm just doing local. So these are common ones with local businesses and reviews, right? And so see what they, they have. Obviously, if the big guys are offering it, um, they can pay for a lot of research and know what consumers want and they're going to offer it. So if they're offering it, probably, it probably means... Um, that um, it's worth putting on your site or ad adapting uh, for your site. So you can pull some uh, best practices from those sites. The other thing I'd, I'd warn you on though, is just because Yelp has it or can do it, doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to or be able to afford to do it exactly like those other sites. I get this a lot from uh, you know people doing the developer ask uh, for a BD. Um, and uh, they, you know, they ask for, I want my site to work exactly like Angie's List, or I want to replicate 
Amazon or some some question like that. It's just a big overarching question. You're not going to be Amazon or Yelp. You can do a lot of things it does, but think about your niche. Think about what they provide. See what BD can do for you and just kind of pull some of the, the important stuff of what you want to have for feature sets. And the other thing I, I did for my, since it's a local directory, I had to look at the news and media. So there's other, um, any anybody for any particular niche, there, there's articles, right? Um, there's events, there's news kind of stuff that you can do. So you always want to look at the news or media for your, your particular locality or your niche and see what kind of topics they provide. What kind of articles do they um, show their their per, their people? And then maybe that's some of the articles that you want to write or some of the topic sets that you want to cover uh, for your directory. So these are a couple of the local uh, news media stuff that I had to look to, both a kid-focused local one and then just the MLive, which is Michigan News uh, source. So look at the news and media for your particular niche. And then obviously you're doing a directory or um, you may be morphing it to not do a full directory, but you have some sort of directory type things for your your niche. So you have to find those other directories. We just did that with the bowling alley just a second ago. There's other bowling directories on the internet. Um, these are just a couple of local businesses. Uh, and again, you'd be surprised how many businesses are out there in your niche that you just didn't even know about, but it's because maybe they didn't do good advertising, maybe they didn't show up uh, first on the search results, um, or they're just not doing it well, but there may, there may be competition for you, and they may have stuff that's good, and they may have stuff that's bad, but learn from those other directors in your niche. So these are uh, some of the other ones in my area, my state, that I, I didn't either know about or had to learn from in order to see what they were offering in order to adapt, refine, or combine some of the stuff that they were offering so I could make my directory stand out or compete against these particular local directories. And then everybody that does a directory obviously is gonna sell some sort of advertising. They're gonna want ads, they're gonna want uh, businesses to pay for their listings, uh, to give a direct, it's a business directory, right? It's like a yellow pages. You want people to show up higher on the, on the search results. We just talked about that earlier. And so you're going to be an advertising source. You're basically competing against local advertising or niche advertising. If, uh, you know, if it's bowling, it's, uh, it's advertisement at the, at the bowling alley and bowling magazines and bowling websites. Um, you're, you're going to be competing against the direct advertising. So go research um, lo your local or niche advertising uh, avenues and see what they are offering for advertising. See what they are offering for uh, ad sizes, for pricing, for um, any, you name it, uh, see what they're doing. And so here's some other examples of local stuff for local business restaurant uh, advertising that I had to go look at and compete against. So direct advertising, something you want to go look at in your market research. And then uh, because uh, I'm a local directory and you can replace this one with, uh, I guess, any particular niche uh, websites uh, that are not a directory, but other topic sets, whether it be vending uh, sources, uh, resources, suppliers, uh, advertisers, anything else. And, and the, for me, it was travel and tourism or, or chambers of commerce. Um, these are other sites for, for local Michigan sites that I, I had to compete against that were trying to take the same advertising money, the same businesses uh, as me. And uh, I had to go look at, see what I could uh, uh, refine, combine or adapt off their services for my directory to make mine stand out a little bit more. Um, so that uh, the niche sites is something that you're going to have to look at. And so when I talked about uh, refine, adapt, refine, and combine. Um, here's what I'm talking about this. So I kind of went through some of these in the other previous slides. Um, but I, what I, when I say adapt, refine, and combine, what I mean is you adapt the weaknesses, you refine their strengths and make them better, and then you combine complementary services whenever you can to try to use their traffic uh, for your own. So I'm just going to kind of talk about three businesses real quick of how I'm executing that for my local directory and, and, and extrapolate that into your particular directory niche. So for me, uh, I have the local chamber of commerce. Uh, one of the things that they don't do well um, as her weakness is that they have a directory on their site, but they don't have, it's just a, a listing of their business address and a link to their website, right? They don't have, um, 
pictures. They don't have a website or social media. There's nothing on there. It's just a text link. And so what I what I did is, you know, I'm going with to the uh, the local chambers of commerce and basically offering their members a free listing uh, on my site, the free basic listing to give them those added functionalities and something that the chamber is willing to uh, advertise as a free resource uh, for their particular members. Um, and it gives them something to provide their members as well, but it gets them something for me and gets them in the door in my s ecosystem. So I'm basically adapting the weakness of a, a potential competitor um, as best I can and try to adapt that weakness into a strength and, and make uh, get, gain some traction for my directory. Another one, uh, you know, nextdoor.com basically has uh, local neighborhoods. Uh, for their thing, but it's a company out of California, I believe, and they they go all across the the nation. Um, but it, it's it's across the nation. It's not really local. So uh, in refining the strengths for theirs, I, I, you know, I took a a couple uh, different uh, things from their site where they kind of had a neighborhood focused groups, um, and I kind of uh, made uh, you know started making uh, neighborhood. Uh, pages, uh, but it's my my whole stick there is that it's not a California company that says next door that's in California. This is actually the town domain name. What you know, Hudsonville.com. I am local. I am next door. They're not, and so I can kind of do the same thing uh, that they're doing. Uh, but you're actually talking to people and interacting with people that are actually in the town, as opposed to working with a company that's in California and really has no idea what what's going on locally. And then the last thing was the combined complimentary. Um, you know, you can reach out. There's, there's the one uh, that's growing up as kids. It's a, basically a blog. It's a bunch of moms blogging about stuff for kids, right, and stuff to do locally, but they don't have a directory. They don't have business listings. If they have a business in a blog, they literally just link to um, the, the business. Uh, they don't have any traction uh, to be able to get uh, stuff for the business. And so um, maybe you don't have articles, but you got the directory. Maybe they have articles, but don't um, you have the directory, but not the articles. They have the articles, but not the directory. So maybe you can uh, tie in and uh, utilize other people that seemingly are competitors for your dollars, but kind of go uh, trade or, or go offer them linkage or a uh, share of maybe sales on your directory to have those instead of the links going to directly to the page, they go to the the directory site where it has all the information on the business, which is more valuable for your, their customers than just a link to the page. Uh, but then you can maybe put some links to their blog articles on your page to kind of get some cross pollination. And then when you when you do that with a an already uh, tractioned or a big bigger business in your local area, then you can both benefit. So again, um, you can see everybody as competitors, or you can you know see uh, ways to adapt or uh, adapt your weaknesses, refine the strengths, or combine complementary services. Uh, for those things that you're researching to make your directory just a little bit better. Does anybody have any uh, examples of that that they've done for e any of those types of things for their directory in the past? Hey, John, welcome. And again, uh, you guys can jump in there um, whenever you guys want, if you guys have any questions as, uh, as I'm going through. So the next thing when we're talking about, you know, as you adapt or find and combine, you're going to start coming up with things that you can offer um, as as a directory. And so when you when you're thinking about what am I offering, this is kind of what you're going to package your directory uh, in terms of making the sale or telling somebody why they need to pay for your directory about what uh, elements of value that you are providing. And so um, hopefully this comes through on the screen. I'll probably uh, link to it uh, in the uh, the recording there in, in YouTube and on my directory when I post it, just so you guys can get the high res uh, for this particular uh, graphic. But basically goes uh, from the value of functional at the bottom of the pyramid to uh, emotional uh, is the next step up. The life changing is the next step. And the very top is basically social impact or uh, they say self transcendence. But it is something where you just totally, totally changes your life. Um, and obviously you'd probably want to be at that pinnacle where, where your directory just totally changes somebody's life. Uh, I know a lot of, um, I know Michelle, you know, you have, uh, a directory that if, if you, if somebody uses a lot, utilizes the right services or gets help for, for their, their child or their, their ability, you know, um, social type stuff or their, uh, specific, uh, requirement for their, uh, 
you know, their, their health or welfare, it can totally change their life. And so obviously that's what everybody wants for the directory, but there's other stuff that maybe as you're looking through this chart, you can kind of pick out some items that you can focus on and provide to your directory owners. So I just highlighted a couple um, as an example that, that I would do for my local directory on the functional side, you know, it, my directory saves time, simplifies their life, makes uh, the businesses more money, hopefully, uh, reduces their effort to try to find local information, has them avoid hassles of having to go to multiple websites, reduces the advertising costs potentially for the businesses because they can get direct access to local consumers, uh, provides quality content uh, that they don't have to search through a bunch of fluff on the internet to get what they need, and then informs the local populace on local news events and businesses. Um, and then, you know, maybe at the emotional level, it provides access, right, where they, they, don't, have, they don't feel like they uh, um, are part of a local community, and that's the next step up for, for life-changing, that they have an affiliation or belonging, that they feel like they're supporting the local businesses, uh, especially uh, now with the COVID, everybody's kind of focusing on that. So um, look at this list and maybe, you know, maybe you provide variety or you integrate with things that other, other businesses don't. Maybe it's a fun and entertaining, uh, ten, fun and entertaining site. Uh, maybe you, you would reduce their stre strengths, uh, stress or anxiety. Maybe you provide rewards as part of your directory package. Maybe you are, do motivational uh, blogs or other articles or videos that motivates them uh, provides hope or, or gets them uh, to the next uh, stage of their life. So uh, just think about what those elements of value that your directory provides. And then that, uh, based on what you're providing them, that that is what you're going to put in your copy for what you provide and kind of uh, translate um, the reality of those values into concrete uh you know, examples and uh, words so that they can realize that your directory, your service, your product, whatever it is, is worth paying for. So I want to kind of translate those things I just talked about into um, my website. And again, I'm just using this as an example. But uh, when you're when you're telling the story of what your directory does, when somebody comes to your website and says, why am I paying for this? What are you going to do for me? Uh, what What are those value elements you're providing? I just kind of highlighted in yellow here in words what those value elements I just went on the pyramid in the previous slide. So uh, Hudsonville.com is dedicated to bringing people, businesses, and neighborhoods closer, right? For professionals, we simplify your information dissemination by providing products and services that save you time and reduces costs. For consumers, uh, you can avoid the hassle and effort of using multiple sites for local information. We're going to provide a community of relevant services, products, and businesses, quality resources close to your home. And then for advertisers, we're going to provide access to viewership based on local topic sets that enable your brand recognition and advertising opportunities that make you money. And so Hopefully everybody can see there. And again, your your niche is going to be a little bit different. Your wording is going to be a little bit different. But just by putting those words uh, of value into there, they can put themselves in that particular, uh, whatever, whichever, you know, if they're a professional consumer advertiser and say, yes, that is me. That is what I want. I am willing to pay for that. Um, where do I sign up? Now, it's not that easy, right? You got to translate that into actual features and sit, you know, uh, sell them on that stuff. But that's kind of what I'm talking about when you're looking at value and translate that into what you're going to provide to the customer. Um, that's what you need to think about and be able to translate into words and into their sales page for your directory. And that's what's going to sell people on your business. So when uh, the, the real question then is how do I create that value proposition? Um, the the problem with the directory usually is it's a chicken and the egg uh, thing. It's a two-sided marketplace. Um, you need both clients and you need consumers or you need a product uh, in order to get clients. And which one comes first? Do you put, do you have business listings, focus on that, and then don't have anybody that visits the site. So you can't tell them you have anybody visiting. And so none of the businesses are going to want to go on there. Um, or do you focus on the the clients first to get a bunch of consumers to go to your site, but then you don't have any businesses on there for the clients to go see and it kind of fizzles out. And so there's kind of a, a fine line between uh, both of those and you need to be able to do uh, both at the same time 
um, or a little bit at a time and slowly ramp up. So that, that's something you need to think about when you're you're making that pitch. Um, are you focusing on the client side or are you focusing on the business side um, or, or both? And, and where are you going to put your efforts? So, um, so the bottom question is, you know, how do you convince others to bring their inventory to your marketplace uh, when there are no buyers? And then how do you attract the buyers when you don't have inventory? It's a, it's a very sticky problem. And that's called the two-sided marketplace. Welcome to the directory dilemma uh, that we always find ourselves in with these directories. So I just want to go over a couple of things today that can kind of maybe help you think through this uh, when you're thinking about where to focus. Uh, the first thing is, uh, and it's probably the easiest thing to do, is, is to fake the chicken. And so when we're talking about the chicken and the egg and which one comes first, yeah, you can provide value through data curation of existing content and then provide a better user experience for the initial visitors that are coming to your site. And so basically what you are in the supply and demand curve, you're basically being your own supply. Um, and, and then the question becomes, how do you add all that data? And so you can download um, screen scrape by Google, down, buy a list. You can add other content. You can manually do it. You can just add some listings yourselves or companies or businesses or clients or, um, you know, um, Rich is on here. So podcasts or companies, right? I mean, you can add all that stuff yourself um, because that's generally easier to uh, fake that side of the equation. You can't fake a customer, right? You can't um, ask, sign up a whole bunch of people and tell a business, hey, add it. I've got 500 users when you don't have 500 users. So faking the chicken um, and then and then trying to sell the egg, the client side, based on the, the businesses you mainly put in there is usually the easiest thing to do. Um, the other, another thing you can do is have the chicken make your eggs. And so what I mean by that is uh, once you have um, some businesses in there, um, you need to have them kind of bring in the clients for you. So, uh, you know, provide social media tools to pr promote uh, them if they add reviews or articles. Uh, if they have uh, coupons, you know, then you have a, a set uh, social media platforms where you're going to push out the coupons to when they add those in there. Uh, provide logo decals for their windows. That's something I do. Um, or they can give them a little uh, window sticky if they're part of your group, right? Uh, provide those CR codes that BD has for business review table tents at the checkout. Um, you know, basically you provide a, and come up with resources for those businesses as they sign up. Uh, provide them with ways that they can get the word out to their clientele. Uh, and that'll slowly snowball where you get more businesses as more clients come. Um, then you can tout the extra clients uh, to, to grab extra businesses and it can, it'll kind of grow from there. But you need to provide them a way to advertise your site uh, in the guise of enhancing their capability. So it's getting them uh, uh, visits to their profile or getting them to people to sign up for reviews or getting advertisements for their, uh, their, their new event. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you want to provide them something, uh, but in doing so, get traffic back to the website. And then the other thing you can do is have the chicken create more chicken, and uh, you can have other businesses, uh, you know, recruit other businesses. So um, maybe the first few that you have, or some friends that you have in business, say, "Hey, what uh, what other businesses do you think could profit from this?" And then if they give you some names, you can go directly to those businesses and say, hey, John uh, is advertising on our site. He, get, you know, he thought you would, uh, um, you know, benefit from this. Can we uh, have a talk? See what we can do for you. And so, and then you do that again uh, and ask, I know Frank's big on this. He's asking for, or maybe you give them a discount if they provide, uh, you know, uh, three referrals for you to other local businesses uh, for your services. And then you'll give them a reduced fee for them being on your directory if they do that. So you can kind of snowball it for there, but you basically have the businesses create more businesses by trying to get them into the fold as well. And then the more people, businesses you claim, uh, the more that are legitimate businesses on there uh, and everybody's participating. Again, that will snowball over time. And then another thing you can do is have your chicken be the eggs. And so um, a lot of times this is more for focused for business to business type sites, but it also... Um, when you're posting, you know, content, coupons, articles, videos, um, a lot of times other people like to see that they're doing more than other businesses in their niche. So a lot of times, um, 
especially when you're starting out, you don't necessarily need a lot of people that are not businesses coming there. If you have businesses coming there and everybody's posting and they're, they're going to casually look at other businesses or other content on your website. Um, and so they're, they're kind of acting both as a business at that point and the client. But um, if you get people posting stuff, you can, you can actually start to churn up the snowball of content as well, just by focusing on the businesses uh, as well to have them add content. And it's not necessarily clients adding events or articles in your local populace or it, within your niche. It may just be the actual businesses. So those are just some things to think about, but it's a two-sided marketplace. You got to figure out where to focus your, your effort, businesses, clientele. How are you going to get the initial seeding of businesses and uh, how are you going to grow that over time? Does anybody have any questions on that or any other uh, struggles or, or successes, I guess, that they've had for the chicken and egg dilemma on their, on their directory? I'm hoping I don't have everybody muted here. Um, so uh, I'll just uh, jump in uh, whenever you want. I just want to make sure that uh, I'll just keep talking here, but I just don't want to cut anybody off if they have any comments there. Um, Cause I know there's a lot of people in the room here right now. So now that, now that you know um, who you want to focus on initially, um, you need to think about, um, you know, that last one is how, you know, why does it generate revenue or how are you going to generate revenue? And so this is kind of a model that I've come up with is kind of thinking about my directory and uh, how people normally make money off from there. And just some thought processes you want to go into as you're going into your pricing model or you're thinking about expansion or you're thinking about how am I going to make money with my directory uh, this is what I call the, the multi-axis monetization model for the directories. And so the first axis is uh, is kind of what everybody focuses on and, and kind of stops at, to be honest. They think about what are my main plans. And so these are these three blocks down here at the bottom, the small, medium, large, right? Gold, silver, platinum, um, free, um, regular, and premium. You know, whatever those three levels are, that's that's kind of the only axis they're thinking about. And so um, when they're doing that, um, you know, they're, they're just limiting themselves to one, one axis. One of them's probably free if it's a small one and you're not even making money on that. So you only have the medium or large or the gold or the platinum and you're trying to make all your money off from that. And so that's one uh, access, but that's only for the directory and you're not thinking about other potential uh, things. So, um, when, when you're doing that, though, um, you want to ask yourselves, um, you know, a couple questions is what are your two key metrics? And what I, what I mean by that is if you're going to try to upsell or get people to go from the small to the medium or the medium to the large or the small to the large, you got to think about for your particular niche or your directory, what are the two big things somebody is going to pay money for? Do they really care that they're number one, vice number two on the listings? Do they really care that they can add photos? Do they really care that uh, they can't or can post a coupon? Um, just think about that. And, and and a lot of times if you're looking at competition on what they're they're offering, look at their pricing plans. But really, you want to you want to think about and focus and pick the right metrics that are going to matter. Um, I'll just use a a home site for an example for a for sale by owner pictures is probably a big one on there so if, if you have a free listing on the free plan and you can't post a photo it just kind of has the address and and no photos but the the next tier up has one photo maybe the maybe the abil the mere ability to add one photo is enough to get them into that mid middle uh middle plan and then maybe the Uber plan has unlimited photos or five or, or unlimited, you know, is that, is that unlimited photo? Is that enough to push them over the hump to get to that, that big uh, item? And this may be something you have to play with over time, or again, survey your customers when you're doing the market research, but figure out not only what are the key metrics, but where is the tipping point between them paying for something and not paying for something? And what I mean by that is, let's say the let's say the free you had five photos, and then the their first paid tier you have unlimited photos. You may be thinking, well, unlimited photos, I'd want that. People are going to pay me twenty dollars a month for the unlimited photos. 
Well, not if they're fine. They only have four photos on average to place. The five photos for free will get them done, get their business done all day long. They're gonna they're gonna pick free. And so if 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 the average people put four pictures on there, maybe you offer one picture for free, but everybody likes to put four, and so that'll get you some subscriptions just by asking for four. Or maybe you go to zero and and four. So think about that. What are the what are what are the metrics people are going to pay for, and then where are the tipping point in those metrics in order for people to pay the more money? And then they obviously want to optimize that. So those are the kind of the uh, and the second question. Sorry for that one. Is then what features uh, do you save and then roll out later? So if if you have uh, the key metrics and you focus on that, the other ones maybe aren't key metrics, but they're the kind of cool things to add on later. Maybe you add. Um, value to the medium and large plan uh, later, and you keep adding to the value of that large plan over time or the medium plan over time, and, and those slowly start incrementally looking better and better than that free plan over time. Um, and that allows you to focus and execute and launch those uh, a little bit more efficiently as you add them in there. So don't always just give everything to every plan. Um, Take some time to think about what you want to add maybe to the medium only or maybe only to the large. And then that if the if they weren't at the tipping point now, as you add those features later, uh, they, you may be able to pull some people up to the higher price plans. So that's the first axis. Those are some questions you, you may want to ask. And then a couple of the other uh, the, the second axis is uh, is the multiple listing uh, listings or categories. And so I kind of stacked that in the back there behind the medium, but that kind of goes another dimension in the back um, that you don't have to offer everybody on the medium plan. So let's say um, it's a, a medium plan business. It's $20 a month. Um, maybe your multiple listing feature to be able to have multiple listings under one business. So let's think pizza chains or realties or um, other, other companies that have uh, lawyers, maybe that have multiple chains. Maybe the medium plan is $20. Uh, for one listing, and then maybe it's thirty dollars to have up to five listings on the multiple listings plan. So you're paying for the the BD VIP, and then and now you're adding that multiple listings to a particular plan. That kind of went in a different dimension. So now you, it's the same medium plan, uh, but instead of just lopping that feature set and multiple listings as part of the medium plan or as part of the large plan. Um, that is something independent of membership levels where you can add that on to every single one. Maybe. Maybe small is 10, uh, multiple smalls is 20. Maybe the one medium is 20 and the multiple mediums is 40. And then the large is 40 and the multiple larges are 80. So you can kind of go to that different dimension, add on different feature sets that kind of stack onto the different dimension and be able to upsell those particular items. And there's a bunch of those for the, the BD campaign. Don't just think that you need to add features to that first axis and just have small, medium, large, and maybe other uh, plans that you can make. So if, for example, you did the small, medium, large, and then had multiple listings for both of those, I don't have that on the diagram, but it'd basically be a, a two by three matrix, basically. And you'd have six different membership plans at that point, a small, medium, and large, and then a multi-listing small, medium, and large, and you have six membership levels. So you're kind of using those two dimensions, you have six different plans. But again, by doing that, you may be able to maximize your profitability. And the third axis, is add-ons. And so maybe it's not uh, multiple listing stuff. You're just kind of giving them more listings or more of the same stuff. Maybe it's just tacking on an additional uh, uh, item into there. So, um, and then when you're at, thinking about that, you know, what are your, your add-on metrics? What, what are you willing to uh, add that for? What, what do you think people will pay for uh, as an add-on? So for example, uh, in the BD ecosystem, uh, the featured on homepage uh, aspect of BD ha directory has nothing to do with a membership plan. It's a manual process. You turn it on by the membership uh, by, or by the person, and you say, I want you featured on the homepage in slot number two. So if you offer that as an add-on, anybody and any of those six membership plans can pay and use that digital download add-on to pay for a featured on homepage add-on and you can get extra money for any membership plan. Don't just think you have to add the featured on homepage into the single access large plan is what I'm getting at. Because now you're not allowing anybody in the small plan 
to pay an extra money just to get on the homepage. Maybe that's maybe that's the only thing that they're willing to pay for. But because you lumped it into the large plan uh, at that higher monthly rate with all those other features, they don't want all those other features. They literally just want to pay to be on the homepage. And so if you add that in as a vertical additional add-on pricing, you may get some more money that wasn't originally in your offerings to begin with. So that's the vertical. Um, and then you can basically add, and it doesn't have to be just a BD option. It could now be, um, you know, some other people add on chatbots, right? You pay the uh, the ultimate $500 a month plan and you get a customized chatbot for your site. It's an add-on. Um, or it's, it's maybe part of the large plan, but you can maybe add that on to a small plan if you just want the chatbot. So think about other services, other stuff that you can just stack on there, not only the BD, but other other stuff. Um, and that kind of leads me to that, I guess, that, that fourth axis is either your own solutions or partner solutions um, that you can integrate in there. So think about other services that you provide. Maybe um, they're advertising as the large plan. You want to... Uh, I've seen this a bunch with the directories I work with. You're going to add uh, a where you publicize their listing, their event on your Facebook service because you have uh, 15,000 Facebook followers or your Instagram service. You're going to put their image on your Instagram feed and you're going to do that for uh, anybody who pays for your other services. So it's not, it can be, but it doesn't have to be part of those other axes. Maybe you ex expand out and uh, add any other services. Maybe it's copywriting. Maybe you make their uh, their news article for them. Say, hey, as a member of uh, um, any of the plans, if you pay us an extra blank fee per month, we're going to write one article about your event or your business. We're going to put it on the front of our blog on the homepage. And then think about other partner solutions uh, that are out there that are not you. So think about what you can do. Think about what you do well or could do and charge money for that. Or uh, find partner solutions like referral fees, affiliate programs, other stuff that you don't do well or you can't do or don't have the capability to do. And uh, so either solicit them to provide that for your businesses or provide the referral or affiliate links to the other businesses uh, and basically upsell them on stuff that you can either integrate, provide to them or refer them to um, that can kind of add additional functionality, profitability for your business. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. It's the kind of the multi-axis monetization uh, process there. And uh, you can do the axis one is just basically the main plans where everybody kind of stops at. You can do the second axis where you make multiple uh, listings or uh, other solutions on that. You can do add-ons where you stack it on for anybody. Or you can kind of go to that fourth dimension there where you kind of expand beyond your own BD site uh, to, to other services that you can do outside of the BD sphere or to other partners or programs or services that are even outside uh, your BD service or your expertise uh, central. So that kind of covers the, the four uh, topic sets uh, there. And I just want to uh, kind of go one step further on there for when you're thinking about those multi-axis things for the BD directory. Um, I just kind of put on the screen here, all of the different options you can charge for. Um, you know, it's, it may be feature options where it's, you know, viewing the coupons or posting events, being able to uh, post a sound cloud thing or a pro be able to have a product, product the ability to, to add favorites, you name it. Uh, feature options, those are something you can add to different plans. You can do badge types, right, where you maybe have a veteran or nonprofit or first responder or chamber member or uh, diamond platinum, you have badges you can add for different uh, different plans. Uh, and there's also profile options, right? Um, where you can allow or disallow different profile things. Hey, can they, uh, do they have different lead pricing? Do Can they add a logo? Can they add a, a full uh, profile cover photo? Um, do they have the click to call? Do they get the QR code? Do they get the private chat? So all the, not just the feature options where they can post different posts, but the profile options where they can either have capabilities where you can turn it off by membership level. Um, and then search visibility, right? Are you featured on the homepage? Is your highlighted? Is your priority? Is there a, a category limit? Auto post review. Can you reply to reviews? Can you accept reviews? Uh, are, are, is your actual searchable? Do you have a, a website link? Is it no follow? Do follow? There, I mean, there's, there's literally 45 different things you can turn on or off for your particular level or add-ons 
or what have you. So, um, so take some time, think about those, think about the metrics, which one of those things are really important for your niche. Don't add a bunch of stuff that, that people aren't going to pay for or aren't going to differentiate, differentiate the levels of your product or from your sites. But these are, as you're going through, think about what BD offers and what's going to make a difference for your particular niche. And then, and then use those as your category pricing differentiators. So that's all I have there. Let me just, uh, I guess I'm on the questions here. I'll go back to the original uh, screen here um, and uh, just kind of get back to the the who, what, how, and why and the, and the question set, and we can kind of talk it over from there. But those are the, the four things you want to kind of focus on. Who is your target customer? What do you offer the customer? How are you going to create that value proposition uh, to, to portray that uh, value to the customer? Uh, and then what are those metrics, those those things that you can sell, that you can do, that you are telling them that you provide for the value? How are you going to price those and generate money from your directory? And that's kind of uh, the, the, the four um, sticking points that everybody either kind of does wrong or glosses over or doesn't think about thinking they're going to fill in automatically. But you got to put some thought into that. Uh, because usually if you're not making money, you're not seeing the traffic or um, not feeling the love from your directory, it's probably because you are focusing on the wrong market. You don't know what you're offering to the customer. They don't know when they go to your site what it is because you're not telling them. Um, and then it's maybe priced wrong or you're focusing on things that they just don't care about or are not willing to pay for. And you're only focusing on your directory items uh, and not thinking about other items that you can help monetize or expand your business. So with that, anybody have any uh, questions uh, or topic sets on those that you'd like to discuss or any questions or anything on the BD directors as well in, in reference to those things that, that I can help answer? Hey guys, I want to. If anybody can jump on the the audio real quick, I just want. I know we have other people in the in the room here up on uh, uh, audio. I just want to make sure I'm still going out. So I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Mike. Um, I know you couldn't see a lot of stuff on the on the screen there, Mike. Did anything resonate with you, or anything uh, that you have a question on, or anything you haven't thought of, or? Well, I do have one question. Let's suppose that somebody does start going big. At what point do you abandon the BD platform and do it on your own? Custom, total, top to bottom. Million, two million, ten million, hundred million, what? <laughs> um, just your opinion. I, just your I guess, opinion. Well, the reason I'm laughing is because uh, not that you can't get there. I'll, I'll be on. You know, probably the max that you're going to see on the BD platform in terms of monetary value before um, that you looked elsewhere is probably the million dollars. That's probably the top end directories that I'm seeing execute with what they've got without going custom is probably the million dollar mark. Okay, so, I, was, I was just wondering. Thank you. Yeah, and and so and again. Oh, you know, for everybody li listening, either live here or on the replay, I would, you know, cage everybody in there to, to realize don't, I mean, that's good to have those lofty, lofty goals. And it's a good problem to have, right? If you're making that much money, I think it becomes self-evident at that point. Um, hopefully that if, if, if you are making that much money and can afford, uh, you know, a, a, I'd say if you're going to custom uh, do something, probably a $50,000 uh, build is probably not uh, outside or probably about the baseline stuff that you're going to do for a custom full line build for a, uh, a functionality. So that's what you're kind of looking at. If you're making enough money to do that, um, it'll kind of be self critiquing at that point. You're probably going to execute that, um, that, that direction when you get to that point and it's just going to happen because you have the money and you just want to do that. Um, it's, and, and I'll be honest, you know, for most of the people um, especially if they don't have the the goals of going, you know, being a, a an Amazon or something, they're probably comfortable with making the the million dollars or the um, the six digits right per year on the directory, and they're just going to be good, you know, good with that. And it's probably um, it's probably not necessarily going to be the platform that's that's slowing them down at that point. It's just because they're happy with that and are are not going to spend the money or ad advertising or get the extra people in order to scale. Uh, to the next level to even need to, to get the development out in an outside uh, outside realm. Um, a couple a couple other items that that may um, 
you know, force you to go a different direction. Uh, one is is maybe the the scale of it in terms of number of listings. Obviously, it, it's at a hundred thousand right now with the baseline. If you're at VIP, it gives you another hundred thousand. That's two hundred thousand listings. If you're national and have millions, I think they locked it down. I think Frank used to have millions on his initial directory. Right now, it's at a hundred and two hundred. If you get the VIP, you can stack those so you can keep adding a hundred thousand dollars at you know ten dollars a month pop or twenty dollars a month pop. So, um, so the directory can handle those millions uh, of directories, and, and the MySQL can do that. Uh, so that's usually not a limiter unless you're not paying for more. Um, the the scale of the server uh, can be a, a limiting factor. If you get a ton of uh, users and you keep breaching that 20 gig a month for the uh, the VIPs, again, that's stackable. So if you keep running out of resources, you can stack that. And again, um, if, you're, if you're getting that much traffic and uh, you need to buy additional resources, Again, hopefully you're monetizing it good enough where the extra $20, $40, $100 a month for the extra resources should not be a showstopper. Because again, if you get that much traffic, you should be monetizing it enough to be able to pay for that. Um, but you, you know, the next step on that is BD does offer uh, dedicated servers uh, as well. Um, you know, it gets into like 400 to $500 a month, but again, that's your own server, your own resources. Um, and, uh, and and just get the site running faster at those higher server loads. And that is an, an option as well that they offer that you don't have to pay, you know, luckily for the lifetime license or your VIPs, they only charge the people that really need that. And again, so they have the flex capacity there to give you the extra oomph and the extra stuff when you get that much traffic up to a certain point, right? If, if you get to a certain point, and I think anybody, you know, Patrick always used to say this and, and BD does as well, they're they're not for they're not, you're not going to replicate Yelp or Amazon on their stuff and if if you're that point that they would recommend you go to a different you know resource or platform uh, get a entire custom development down um, your own resources your own servers etc uh, but um, but they do have some flex capacity there uh, as you get the larger that you don't have to pay for until you get that so those are a couple other limiting factors. All right. Um, any other uh, any questions or BD? I know we didn't go into too much specific BD stuff yet today. I just haven't had any questions or any other uh, specific stuff about BD uh, anybody has uh, there. Otherwise, I'll uh, uh, maybe uh, we're at about an hour and a half here. I know we normally go two hours, but we don't have to if uh, there are no questions. Anything else from anybody else? Um, I, the, a couple of things I'll just throw out there from the, the webinar yesterday. If you did not see it, they are... Um, now going to uh, have drag and drop capability for some of the building elements in BD coming up um, where you can make a web page and just drag and drop uh, some items from the sidebar into your presentation so you don't have to start from scratch and it's kind of pre-filled in stuff so that's something to look forward to and it is table based and not bootstrap unfortunately so it is a table based uh, item for the drag and drop, but it will uh, add some functionality for people who do not know how to code or don't want to pay somebody to do that for them. Um, so that'll be good. Um, that was probably one of the bigger uh, developments at the, the webinar that they went over yesterday. All right. Uh, anything else from anybody? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go once, twice. Uh, Rich, you have anything or uh, any, any anything else, Mike, uh, for for you before uh, I go. And hopefully uh, Frank did not lose power. I think he kicked off there. So uh, hopefully uh, he's fine and not in a tornado. Uh, but again, I, I thank everybody for uh, for uh, jumping on the call today. If, uh, if you guys are on the, uh, the recording there, if you guys uh, do uh, want to go avail yourselves uh, of the uh, videos at any time here for the recordings. Uh, we do have them available on uh, directoryvideos.com on our YouTube channel. Feel free to go there. Uh, subscribe to the videos. If for some reason you cannot make a webinar, uh, then uh, feel free to come back anytime to watch those on the replays there. I also have it available on directorytoolkit.com uh, on the video page there once we get that moved over from YouTube so everybody can avail themselves uh, while they're perusing uh, the site there. And as always, if you guys need any customization help or need help with your site, 
um, just for uh, consulting or uh, customizations or otherwise, uh, feel free to give me a shout uh, at my directory toolkit.com. There is a uh, booking uh, link there uh, at the bottom of the page uh, that, or on uh, directorywebinar.com as well. If you guys want to book an appointment to talk anything about your websites or uh, enhance your functionality. So till next time, thank you guys for uh, uh, showing up. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Bye.